So I've been using Apple's new studio display, an amazing 5K 27 inch beautiful IPS display for the last few days. And I'm trying to figure out why everybody is so mad, like why there's so much controversy. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the points I think are very controversial about the new studio display and also talk about some of the things I really like and don't like about this studio display. So let's get into it. How's it going y'all? It has been Aqua, like the color, and let's just slice right through the vegan beef. And I would love to hear from you, like what do you think of the studio display? Did you get it? Do you think it's overpriced? What are your favorite things about this display? What are your not so favorite things? Let me know down in the comments. So why is this Apple display so controversial? So the first point I think is that it's kind of expensive for a display. It's $1599 US dollars. And then if you wanna be able to raise the height up and down on it, you have to pay another $400. In my experience, do I think this display is overpriced? a little bit for what you get, especially when you have been using something like the MacBook Pro 14 inch or 16 inch, which has a beautiful display. I've been using the 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro machine as my main machine for the last few months. And it's an absolutely beautiful display. It has ProMotion, which goes up to 120 Hertz and a variable refresh rate. And that brings me to point number two about the studio display, which I think is actually probably the most controversial point that this display in 2022 does not have ProMotion motion. It doesn't have that variable refresh rate that goes up to 120 hertz. This display is stuck at 60 hertz. And for a lot of people, that's really controversial. We're getting more and more in a ProMotion type of Apple ecosystem with the iPhone 13 Pro, which has an amazing display, the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch, which have amazing displays. There's also the iPad Pro. ProMotion is such an amazing feature. It's kind of like one of those things that once you get used to using it on a daily basis, you go back to something that's 60 hertz and it feels choppy. It really makes a big difference when you're doing things like, you know, scrolling around the interface, especially when you're in Safari and you're just kind of scrolling around and stuff. There's something really nice about ProMotion that just makes everything feel faster and more fluid. So for that point, I can actually see why a lot of people think that it's actually a step down to go to a display like the studio display that only taps out at 60 hertz. For some people, for a lot of people, you probably wouldn't even notice that, especially if you haven't used a ProMotion display before or a higher refresh rate display. And to that point, for people that are kind of mad about no ProMotion on this display, I totally get that. And I actually kind of agree with y'all. I mean, $1,600 to me in 2022, we better see some ProMotion display. <laughs> and I will say that after using the studio display for a couple hours or so, I don't really notice it as much. But then as soon as I go back to my iPhone or my iPad Pro or something, and I get that sweet ProMotion, I go back to this and I'm just like, damn, this feels choppy. I don't really want to use it as much. Another huge complaint that a lot of people have about the studio display is the brightness and the fact that it doesn't include HDR support. For me, the brightness isn't really a problem because it goes up to 600 nits, which is really bright, even without HDR kind of ramping up that brightness. The fact that this monitor does not support HDR for me and doesn't increase the brightness, you know, to that higher contrast, higher definition type of HDR type of look, that to me is one of the biggest bummers about the studio display, especially especially because even this video that you're seeing right now, I have been shooting and editing and exporting all of my recent videos on my channel in HDR. And on this display, I can't really do my accurate editing in the HDR color space on this machine. I mean, I can edit technically in Final Cut Pro and it's not showing the true HDR version of my video, but it's actually showing like an SDR kind of preview of the HDR content. I can do with the brightness though. When it comes to brightness, 600 nits is perfect to me. I mean, this thing looks really, really nice side by side with my MacBook Pro 14 inch, even though the MacBook Pro 14 inch does get brighter. Side by side, this monitor and the MacBook Pro are a beautiful combination. Just don't expect this monitor to show HDR. And another aspect about this display that has been controversial is it doesn't use mini LED technology. It doesn't use OLED or POLED or any of that fancy stuff. It's still an IPS display. It's 2022. Why did they go with IPS on this display? That's another kind of decision where I was like, Hmm, it seems like they're kind of going back in time a little bit, especially when you're paying $15.99 for this monitor. Like if this monitor was like $8.99 or something, then to me, yeah, IPS, you know, LCD or whatever. But $15.99 though, that's really expensive. And there's a lot of monitors on the market that 
support HDR that have a ton of different features that this monitor actually doesn't have that are way cheaper. But when I've been using this display, just like, you know, doing my normal kind of video editing, photo editing, music creation, the IPS part of it kind of dissipates and I don't really think, damn, why is this an IPS display? They should have had mini LED or something. It's still a gorgeous and ultra bright display, but there's certain times like when I'm watching a movie or something on Netflix and there's a really dark black background or something, it looks like a lighter gray. You don't get the true black, you know, beautiful, thick, inky black on this monitor. You get a kind of dark gray and it's kind of a bummer. I guess I'm kind of spoiled. I'm starting to realize I'm really spoiled by the beautiful displays like on the MacBook Pro 14 inch, iPhone, iPad, etc. So let's talk about the design and build now because that's another thing that I think you either love or hate about the studio display. And I actually really, really love it. I think it's a beautiful device. It's well built. It seriously is built like a freaking tank. Like when you're moving this thing around and you're holding it, I mean, it's heavy. It feels like a really substantial device. It feels like 1599. Ergonomically for me, the way it sits on the desk, it doesn't really need the height adjustable stand in my opinion. Like it's kind of at like the perfect height you know, just tilted maybe up just a little bit when it's on my desk in front of me. And the ergonomics I think are actually amazing. I also love how beautifully minimalist this display is. Like there's no Apple logo anywhere on the front. It's just this black bezel that's uniform, which is really nice. And then there's this really beautiful base that's super minimal, has that hole in the back for a little cable management. There's some nice speakers on the bottom and the top. There's actually six speakers overall in this display, which actually sound pretty good. And then there's three USB ports and then one Thunderbolt port on the back and it's really minimal. There's not even a power button. Like I don't even think, can you even power this thing off using a button? I don't think there's actually a power button anywhere on this display. And speaking of power, that's another kind of controversial topic about this display. The power cable actually can't be taken out of the display. And I've actually seen other videos like MKBHD just released one where, you know, you can actually pull out the power cable if you tug hard enough. Not a deal breaker, but it's definitely kind of a strange design choice that you can't remove that cable in the back of the display really easily, especially when Apple recently is pushing a lot of new like MagSafe type of technologies. And I can't remember the last Apple device where you could not remove the power cable. And there's something about that design wise that feels a little clunky to me, but it's such a weird move. Why wouldn't they make it more accessible for people to just remove the cable? Like if it gets torn or messed up or something and you wanted to replace the cable, it would be really hard to like pull it out. And I don't know, it's just a weird design decision. Not a deal breaker though. And another Another point about the design that has been controversial is some people don't like the bezels because they're really thick, especially if you're used to any Apple device recently that has really thin bezels. When you look at this display, at least when I look at this display, it actually looks a little bit dated. Like it almost looks like this design, while I think it is beautiful, this actually looks to me like maybe it should have come out three years ago or something. Like it does look a little bit dated and I'm kind of curious why they didn't make these bezels a lot smaller, especially when they're not really utilizing much of that space for anything other than it just being this black bezel. But what's really cool about this display and also kind of a downfall of it as well is the 12 megapixel built-in camera in this display. And that's really the only thing that's kind of hidden in that bezel. So it's like, why are the bezels so big? And going back to that webcam, I'm going to kind of join the choir in saying that as is, it looks pretty terrible. It looks like a really crappy webcam from like the early 2000s. And technically it's a 12 megapixel camera, which kind of makes me scratch my head like, what are those megapixels doing? Because every image that you get out of this thing looks grainy as hell. And Apple is saying that they are going to release some software updates that'll make it look even better. One aspect that I actually really like about this display though is the built-in speakers. Like the audio experience actually in this display I think is really good for a monitor. You know, it's not gonna blow away, you know, dedicated speakers on your desk or something, or especially headphones. You're definitely gonna need some type of speakers if you want, you know, a thicker, especially in the base, like the sub base. There's almost no base in this monitor when it comes to the subs. But for a monitor though, it sounds fantastic. Like I said, there are six speakers in here and there's also some mics in there as well that sound fantastic. And it gets the job done just for simple, you know, just watching YouTube videos and Netflix or whatever, where I don't necessarily need like a reference quality speakers. Like that's not what these speakers are for. It's just kind of for like ingesting content and just kind of casual music listening. So overall, I think this display has a lot of beautiful tech. It's an absolutely stunning display to look at. It definitely feels high quality. It's sharp as 
tell, it's beautiful to read text. It interfaces with Mac perfectly, like there's no resizing and resolution weird issues that you see with other displays a lot. And I love that it's just plug and play. You just use one cable from your Mac into this display and that's all you really need. And it'll actually charge your MacBook Pro or MacBook Air with that one Thunderbolt cable. So is it worth $1599? I think totally, as long as you're okay with it not having HDR, as long as you're okay with that 60 Hertz refresh rate, which kind of destroys my soul a little bit. <laughs> it does feel a little bit old school. It feels a little bit dated, but if you want just like a really, you know, high quality professional grade Apple display, which this very much is, definitely get the studio display. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I highly commend you. Thank you so much. You are an extremely patient creature and I would like to personally invite you to my discord channel which I'm going to link in the description down below that's where we're talking about the new Mac studio the studio display all kinds of other things Mac technology and also add me on Twitter and Instagram at b3naqua that's it for this video I have a lot more really fun content coming about the Mac studio coming up so be sure to subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one